Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to Calgary Barbell. Uh, this will be our first video in a little bit. We kind of got off track last week, but we have a bunch more good content coming at you right away. Um, we released the program about a week ago, and since then I've had a flood of questions. I've had a ton of people asking questions, so we wanted to make this video sort of as a follow-up to the program, so I can take some time to go through some of the frequently asked questions and give you guys a bit of insight. So if you're gonna do the program, make sure to watch this video through before you do that. So the most common question I've been getting asked is about the use of the RPEs. So in the first block of the program, I think I have some stuff that just says like three sets of eight, eight RPE. So if you're gonna do that, and it's just a, a straight number of sets, there's no Fs or Rs or anything like that, we'll get into that in a sec, but. If it's just a straight number of sets, I want you to work up and try to do that many sets in and around that RPE. So if you're working up to a set of five at eight RPE, that's okay if one set is a seven and a half, one set is an eight, and one set is an eight and a half. Or if you start at an eight, and then the next set's an eight and a half, next set's a nine, et cetera. As long as they're within about one RPE for those three sets, or however many sets are listed, that's totally fine. When we're talking about the F and R sets, those stand for fatigue and repeat sets, respectively. So fatigue sets are always gonna be paired with a nine RPE. For a fatigue set, you're gonna work up to your top set. Uh, let's say for this, this example, we're gonna use one plus two F at a nine RPE. Uh, for let's say four reps. So you're gonna work up to four reps at a nine RPE, and that's gonna be the one. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take 5% off the bar weight. We're gonna bring that bar down, uh, and then we're gonna do two more F sets, the two F, uh, at the reduced load for the same number of reps. So let's say we're using 100 pounds, that's gonna be 100 pounds for four, then you're gonna come down to 95 pounds for two sets of four, those are the fatigue sets. So the R denotes repeat sets. So for example, if we're doing one plus three R by five reps, always gonna be at an eight RP in this program. Every time we have an R, it's gonna be at an eight RP. Um, so in this case, we're gonna have four repeats on top of our top set. So we're gonna work up to a set of five at an eight RP, and then we're simply gonna repeat that same weight for that same number of reps four more times, and those are the four R. Um, it sounds pretty complex, but once you do it a couple times, it makes total sense. In terms of working up to that RP, there's a couple ways we can sort of project the weight that you should be working with. One of them is uh, Mike T's RPE chart. I feel like that's pretty universally used for most people who use RPE training. So we're gonna put a link to that in the description below. That will allow you to anticipate uh, what you should be aiming for for that day. Then what we'll generally do is we're gonna have two ramp up sets. We're gonna go 90% and 95% of your projected load for that day for the same number of reps as your top set. These are what are called ramp ups and they're gonna allow you to accurately gauge where you're gonna be for that day. Maybe your ramp up sets feel heavier, they feel light, and that's where auto regulation comes in because then we can start to adjust that top set up or down based on the performance of those first few sets. When we're doing uh, repeats, definitely expect the RPE to climb. When we're doing the three by eight at eight RPE or three by five at eight RPE, expect the RPE to climb. We wanna try to stay away from anything that's nine and a half, 10 too much. Um, so if you need to, we can adjust the load as you go through. If there's a large number of repeats and you're starting to fatigue really quickly, go ahead and adjust that load to keep it shy of that nine and a half, 10 RP. But you definitely will expect the RP to climb as you progress through the workout. I've had a number of questions about the layout of a week. Generally what I do is Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday off, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday off. Um, if you wanna break it up any other way, that's totally fine. Some people might wanna take a day off between the competition squat and the competition deadlift, so they might wanna go day one off, day two, et cetera. Really, you can break that up however you want. It's not the biggest thing, but like I said, that's the format I use is Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday off, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday off. I had a couple questions about training maxes uh, or the max to use for the percentage-based portion of the program. First off, like it says right on the spreadsheet, right on the chart, the maxes are in pounds. So they're in pounds, use pounds. Um, 
The other thing is use a training max. We want to be about 95% of a true one rep max. This should be something that you can probably do any given day, uh, whether you come in beat up, tired, feeling good, etc., should be a very doable thing. So that's why we usually say about 95% for that training max. Another question I got was about the use of the estimated one rep max in the second portion of the program. So in the second portion of the program, you're gonna work up and hit a top single or triple or double, uh, and that's gonna help you project a max that you will then use for the subsequent percentage-based sets. So in this case, if you're gonna do a single at an 8RP, you're gonna look that up on the chart, you find out that your single at an 8RP is roughly 92%. What you're then gonna do is you're gonna take the weight you used for that, divide it by 0.92, and that's gonna give you an estimated max. That's the number you take your percentage off of for that week or that day. And then the next time you do uh, your RP-based set for that week, It'll then change your estimated max for the week. So the workload based off of that will change as your uh, strength ideally increases throughout the program. I had another question about whether or not the program can be recycled. Absolutely it can be. Feel free to take and modify it, uh, add weeks, remove weeks, play around with the training variables, do whatever you want to it. Um, it's there as a resource. And I think if you can analyze it and change it, then you can you know, you can run something similar to that or something based on that for quite a long time without plateauing. The tempo column denotes uh, the speed at which you're gonna perform the lift. For most lifts in this program, the tempo column's not really that important. Actually, as, as I move forward and, and I've come up with sort of a new way of, uh, of organizing my spreadsheets and my programming, I've taken tempo right out of it because it's generally pretty self-explanatory. A competition squat's gonna be one second down, no pause in the bottom, one second up, and that's the three numbers. The first one is the eccentric, second one is whether or not there's an isometric, and the third is the concentric. So way down, pause at the bottom or not, way up. Uh, competition pause bench press is gonna be a one, one, one tempo, so one second down, one second pause, one second up. Something like a 303 tempo squat uh, is gonna be three seconds down, no pause in the bottom, three seconds up, etc., cetera, et cetera. And the last question, I got a lot of questions about people wanting to add in stuff, do GPP, um, you know, there's not enough curls in the program. Obviously, you can tell by looking at me, I don't do a lot of them. Um, so if you can add those in, or if you want to add those in, as long as they're not affecting your recovery, uh, you're not doing what I did for a period of time where you're doing 40 minutes of arm work after every workout, uh, because that will affect your recovery, believe it or not. So yes, long story short, feel free to add GPP where you feel necessary but if you find it starting to hinder your performance or your recovery throughout the program, you're gonna to wanna to trim that back. Everything you should need to get stronger throughout the program is there, but if you have the need for uh, some beach muscles or whatever, I totally understand that, so go ahead and pepper those in at your own discretion. So that was a bit long-winded, but I got a lot of questions on this, and hopefully that helps you guys clear all those up. Just as a bit of an aside, uh, as you can see, we got our three-quarter length shirts in. Uh, we got our women's tees and our women's racerback tanks. Those will be out on Friday. And huge, huge thank you to everybody who ordered one of our uh, men's tees. We're sold out of a bunch of sizes. We're waiting on a restock already, so thank you guys a lot for that. Um, and that's it. Stay tuned. We got a lot more videos coming out this week, so we'll see you then. <laughs>